Hi chemistry students! In this video, we're going to discuss topic 1 of lesson 2 of your general chemistry 1. So for this video, our objective is to identify common isotopes and their uses. But before we go to these isotopes and their uses, let's first define atoms. What are atoms? Atoms are the smallest fundamental building blocks that make up matter. The idea of atom started with Democritus. Democritus idea was uh, later disregarded due to lack of experimental evidences. This scientist was the first to prove experimentally that atoms existed and indeed are the smallest particles of all forms of matter. It was in the person of John Dalton. In his honor, the, no, the now known as uh, John Dalton's uh, atomic theory are compo is composed of Four postulates. Postulate number one states that atoms are composed of extremely small particles called atoms. This is self-explanatory. All matter is composed of smallest particles called atoms. Postulate number two, all atoms of a given element are identical, having the same mass, size, and chemical properties. So this means that atoms of carbon are similar in, in terms of mass, Vol uh, mass, weight, volume, and other properties. Atoms of carbon are identical and exhibit the same physical properties. So atoms of one element are identical but different from atoms of another element. Postulate number three, compounds are composed of atoms of more than one element. So compounds are, as we all know, are composed of at least two different kinds of atoms. For example, water. Water is composed of two elements, hydrogen and Oxygen, same with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is composed of two atoms, kinds of atoms or elements. We have carbon and oxygen. So for every compound, you expect two or more different kinds of atoms. And postulate number one, a chemical reaction involves only a separation, combination, or rearrangement of atoms. So during chemical, ordinary chemical reactions, Atoms are neither created nor destroyed. Meaning to say that uh, the, the atoms are just undergoing rearrangement. So atoms or uh, atoms in one molecule after the reaction will go to, to uh, uh, form another compound. But they are not destroyed or created. They just undergo rearrangement during chemical reaction. So those are the postulates under the Dalton's atomic theory. Now, let's have the subatomic particles of atoms. Atom, an atom is composed of three subatomic particles, namely the protons, which are positively charged and are found inside the nucleus of an atom. Electrons, the negatively charged, are found outside the nucleus. And neutrons, which are also found inside the nucleus and are neither positive or negative in terms of its charge. Um, atoms are distinct or identified according to these two properties. One is atomic number. Atomic number is denoted by capital Z. Atomic number refers to the number of protons inside the nucleus of a single atom. For example, an oxygen atom has an atomic number of 8. So it means that inside the nucleus of one atom of oxygen, there are 8 protons. For example, we have carbon. Carbon's atomic number is 6. So we expect the total number of protons in the nucleus of a single atom of carbon to be 6. So that's what we mean by atomic number. Given the atomic number, you know, you will know the number of protons inside the nucleus of a single atom of that element. And where can we find the atomic number? We can see, we can uh, determine, identify the atomic number of elements by looking at the modern periodic table. You, you will see there, uh, you just uh, look at the legend and you will see the atomic number. And atomic number is a distinct characteristic or property of all elements. Another distinct characteristic or property is mass number, which you can also find in the periodic table. What is mass number? If atomic number is denoted by capital A. Mass number is denoted by capital A. If atomic number is the number of protons inside the nucleus of a single atom, mass number is the total 
number of both protons and neutrons inside the nucleus of an atom. For example, oxygen has the mass number as indicated in the periodic table 16. 16 means that the mass number 16 is the total number of both protons and neutrons of that element of in the atom of that element and if the atomic number of oxygen is already given as 8 if the mass number is 16 and 8 of 16 is protons therefore the remaining is the number of neutrons let's take for example another element in the periodic table let's have carbon carbon's atomic number is six as i have said earlier its mass number from the rounded the rounded atomic mass indicated in the periodic table is 12. so if six is the atomic number and 12 is the estimated mass number therefore six is the protons 12 is the total number of protons and neutrons therefore six protons and six neutrons let's have another element chlorine chlorine's atomic number is 17 its atomic mass or atomic weight in the periodic table is uh, 34 point uh, uh, five four something when you round that off to rounding off the atomic weight to a whole number is done to approximate or, or to project the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom so if uh, chlorine has 35.45 that will be rounded off to 35 so 35 will be the approximated mass number of chlorine so if atomic number which is the number of protons for chlorine is 17 therefore the difference of 35 and 17 which is 18 gives the number of neutrons in a single atom of that element chlorine so i hope you get that uh, that uh, concept that uh, the mass number can be determined by rounding off the recorded atomic weight of an element in the periodic table and then given the atomic number you simply subtract the mass number and the atomic number to determine the number of neutrons as atomic number is automatically giving us the number of protons the number of neutrons can be determined by the uh, by getting the difference between the mass number and the atomic number you you will see in this next slide what we call the nuclide so this is the general uh, formula for the nuclide so you can see the uh, symbol x will refer to a particular element and then uh, on the left side upper upper left you will see the capital a capital a as uh, as we have mentioned earlier is the mass number of an element while as the subscript lower left we have capital z capital z gives us the number of protons because it means atomic number it's always mass number minus the atomic number to get the components or the constituents of the nucleus of that particular atom. That's why it's called nuclide. Let's have oxygen as uh, we've been using. Oxygen's mass number as taken from the periodic table is 16. So 16 as the atomic as the mass number minus 8 as the atomic number again again uh, we have 16 as the mass number of oxygen and then the lower we have in the lower part we have 8 as the atomic number of that element oxygen we just get the difference to get the number of neutrons because the atomic number 8 gives us already the number of protons i hope that's clear uh, let's have this another uh, element let's have carbon what do you notice with these three uh, nuclides are they the same atoms okay you will see in the nuclides three different mass numbers notice that the three 
elements or atoms have the same atomic numbers while different mass numbers. What makes them different? Obviously, the mass number makes them different. But what else is different among the three? So they have the same atomic number but different mass number. And what is atomic number? Atomic number is the number of photons, meaning to say that all these three atoms have the same number of photons in their nuclei, but they have different neutrons in their nuclei because neutrons can be determined as, let's take a look at this, uh, data. So notice the number of photons to be the same, 666, as indicated in the uh, in the nuclide, so we have the, this is the same atomic number and therefore the same number of protons. The number of electrons for these three atoms are assumed to be the same as the number of protons because they are assumed to be neutral, meaning they are not in the chemical reaction or undergoing any uh, process. So they are in their uh, stable state or ground state. So we have the number of neutrons different. We have for carbon, 12, we have 6 because subtracting mass number 12 and 6 and atomic number 6, you will get 6. And then in carbon 13, we have 6 protons and 7 neutrons. 7 neutrons uh, were taken from as the difference between mass number 13 and 6. And then on the third, we have carbon 14. Mass number minus atomic number 6 will give you a difference of 8. So that means these three atoms have the same number of protons in their nuclear nuclei but different neutrons in their nuclei. And these are called isotopes. So what are isotopes? Isotopes are atoms of the same element. So as, uh, as, you, uh, as you have seen in the previous slide, we have three different kinds of Carbon. We have carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. They are atoms of the same element, carbon, having the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. In, in another way, uh, we define isotopes or atoms as atoms of the same element with the same atomic number but different mass number. Another uh, example uh, we have here is are the three isotopes of hydrogen. We are all familiar with hydrogen. Huh? Uh, but uh, not all of us know that we have three types of hydrogen on Earth, existing on Earth. We have hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. How are they the same and how are they different? As I said earlier, isotopes are having the same number of protons. So what is the same number of protons of these three isotopes of hydrogen? We have one. One photon in the nuclea, nucle, nucleus of each of these three isotopes. They differ in terms of neutrons because they also have different mass numbers. So what is the different, what are the different numbers of neutrons? In hydrogen, we have none, no neutron because one minus one gives you zero. Deuterium, we have one neutron. To, uh, mass number 2 minus atomic number 1 will give you 1. So 1 uh, gives us the number of neutron. And tritium, we have 3 minus 1, which give us 2. So tritium has 2 neutrons in its nucleus. So that's how we uh, compare isotopes of an element. Let's go back to carbon isotopes or isotopes of carbon. So how do we name isotopes again? according to their mass numbers. So for these three isotopes of carbon, we have the names carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. But why is it that the atomic number of atomic mass or atomic weight of carbon in the periodic table is closest to carbon-12? It's 12.0001. Um, why is it not close to 13 or 14? It has something to do with the abundance. So it means that among the three isotopes of carbon on Earth, the most abundant is carbon-12. So it has something to do with the abundance on Earth that the uh, uh, um, uh, atomic weight, 
as listed in the periodic table, is determined or calculated. Okay, let's go to some common uh, isotopes and their uses. Isotopes of an element, for example, these three carbon of uh, isotopes of carbon, isotopes of uh, hydrogen, as I have given, and another uh, set of isotopes which I will be giving. These isotopes have different properties and therefore they have different applications or uses. One good example are, are for one good example is for the atoms of isotopes of uranium. We have two isotopes of uranium. The uh, uranium two three five and uranium two three eight. Uranium two three five is used in nuclear reactors and atomic bombs. While the other lacks th that properties that property that are that that is necessary for the same application so uh it, it has something to do with the properties that uh, uh allows uh, the 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 element or isotope to be used or useful another set of isotopes are the following so again take note isotopes find uh uses in many different fields such as in agriculture, in food, in pest control, in archaeology, and even in medicine. Uh, speaking of medicine, the COVID-60 is a common uh, uh, treatment for those with cancer. So it is said uh, that the gamma ray, that the, the gamma ray irradiation uh, helps uh, kill cancer cells or two more cells. Another is iodine-131. So this is used for the diagnosis and treatment of thyroid function. Another for agriculture, we have nitrogen-15. Nitrogen-15 is used for the study of uptake, retention, utilization of fertilizers, many fertilizers. And another is carbon-14. Carbon-14 in our elementary history, we have... Uh, Heard this because carbon-14 is a tool for um, detecting archaeological finds.